What's going on, America? This is Kevin from Kevin's Corner, where I try to make sense out of nonsense. You know what I try to do, but it gets tough, especially when you're dealing with with fake news like CNN and and April Ryan and her playing the victim role, along with several other pundits. Now, see what I'm about to show you and what I'm about to do is expose the tactics and the motives of the liberal media and the Democrats, who which really are the same, one and the same. But, you know, of course, we got all of this controversy surrounding President Trump with um, Jim Acosta, who brought all of that verbal beating on himself. And then he was accompanied by April Ryan, who stood up with no microphone, no permission, and decided to yell out questions during the press conference. And then when President Trump asked her to sit down and told her she was being rude, she now is the victim. OK, and since we have a lot of enablers in in the liberal media and a lot of enablers, period, uh, in the Democratic Party and all of those snowflakes that support the Democratic Party, um, they feel justified in this. OK, and so I'm going to have to expose this and beat them up verbally and mentally. OK, so let's see what happens here when when April I'm Ryan play a clip, uh, what the president is going to say about you whole group of people awful, who uh, all agree the first president of all also had to say about our own White House correspondent Abby Phillip which, which was also terrible uh, look, listen to this same thing with April Ryan I watch her get up I mean you talk about somebody that's a loser she doesn't know what the hell she's doing she gets publicity and then she gets a pay raise or she gets a contract with I think CNN but she's very uh, nasty, and she shouldn't be. Do you want him to bring in Robert Mueller? What a stupid question that is. What a stupid question. But I watch you a lot. You ask a lot of stupid questions. Okay. Now, of course, you know, they want to play the clip not in the full context, but nonetheless, they will take the sound bites. But even if you take the sound bites, only people who would defend April Ryan are people who don't watch the press conference every day or people who are so liberal and hate Trump so much, they're willing to overlook April Ryan's shenanigans that she presents every single day during the press conference. And the fact that she got up in the middle trying to defend, she's like, I would not be outdone by Jim Acosta. Okay. This is my chance to jump up like the little dog yapping and biting on the edge of somebody's ankles while the bigger dog is uh fighting and barking. She's like, you know what? Let me get in on this. You know, and the president addressed her as well. Okay. In the field of journalism, she is a loser. She's not a journalist. She's an activist. She is an, a, a, a person who has been put in place to do nothing but stir up controversy and help continue to paint a narrative that the president is a racist and the whole White House is a racist and all of that. Now, remember, this is the same woman who asked Sarah Huckabee, does the White House support slavery? OK, that sounds like a loser question to me. I said it in a early, uh, 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 earlier video. I said. Why would you ask a question like this? You get one shot. Okay, one shot. But instead of aiming at the bullseye with the serious question that might make sense and be uh, beneficial to the American public, she wastes her bullet on something stupid like that question. So let's continue and hear what they have to say. Oh, and by the way, President Trump also replied to the lady who asked, do you want this guy to shut down the Mona investigation? And he's looking like, what a stupid question. Because it is. See, they don't ask questions because they want the answer. They ask questions that fulfill or paint a narrative and reinforces a, a, a narrative that they've been pushing into the public. So even if he doesn't answer the question, they leave that question out there in the minds of the public to keep that narrative going. So if they want to keep the Russian narrative going, they will keep asking questions about that, even though they know the president's answer. He done replied. He done addressed those questions tons and tons of times again. He done addressed the whole white nationalist issue tons of times again. He done addressed the uh, illegal immigrant issue tons of times. But nonetheless, they want that narrative to continue to, to, to circulate. So they ask those questions with those particular uh, key words or elements that they want to leave in the mind of the listener right in to the question. So when she asked that, she wants everybody to think that the president wants to shut down the Mueller investigation so they can continue to paint the whole obstruction of justice narrative. That's all she's doing. And so that's why he said that's a stupid question, because what was he going to say? Oh, absolutely. 
I brought this guy in to do exactly that. I wanted him to shut it down because, see, I'm not going to shut it down. This will run interference if I let this guy shut it down. I mean, you know what? Dumb questions. Thank anyway. You, Debbie Phillip, and she does not ask now here comes a lot the of pundits. stupid questions, and she certainly yes, she does not stupid. She's an honest, uh, excellent uh, journalist who, who works for us yes, she uh, is. covering the White House. Uh, now, they have to... <sighs> They have to run interference for their own journalists. Their whole network has received a bad rap. Nobody trusts CNN. Their ratings suck, but they have to say things like, we're not fake news, or they have to say things like, this is an apple. People might tell you it's not an apple, but it's an apple. And then this is an orange. When you have to do that, you know, that must mean you got credibility issues. See, it's like that person who has to tell everybody they are crazy. You know, real crazy people don't say that they're crazy. They don't have to tell you that. You know they're crazy because you see crazy in their behavior. They don't know they're crazy. They just do crazy stuff. But if you out there like, man, you don't know me, man. I'm crazy. You're not really crazy. If you got to tell everybody that, man, you know, you popular and everybody love you, then that means most likely you got a question in your own mind whether people love you. So you have to reiterate that in the public so that you can convince not just them, but yourself. So now he has to say, uh, she's a great uh, journalist, just like all the journalists here at CNN. We all are upstanding, hardworking, trustworthy journalists. <laughs> uh, you know, let's talk a little bit about, first of all, uh, April, what the president said about you and what he said about Abby. OK, here come the victimhood. Wolf, um, I don't you know, I, I guess at this point I'm numb to it. It's been two years of the same thing, but now it's open. Um, it's openly said by the president of the United States, you know, there's been efforts to silence me in the briefing room. There have been efforts to discredit me. Um, but, you know, who I've been and who I am. So wait, you're telling me then your own behavior did not contribute to the efforts to quote unquote silence you. How about not silence you, but control you because you're out of control. Silence would be. April, shut up. Don't ask another question. We're not even going to call on you. We're going to tiptoe around you, okay, like you're a sorry player on a volleyball squad, and they're going, don't pass the ball that person's way because they can't bump, okay? But no, they call on her, and April does it every time. She grandstands. She gets up. She goes too long. She asks ridiculous questions. She's combative. She wants to debate on the floor. All of these things are not Sarah trying to silence her but instead recognizing that you have an operative that's been planted by CNN in the press conference to do nothing but stir up dust and trouble. That's it. But of course, she's the victim, though, right? They're trying to silence you. Now they're just open with it. They've been doing this, trying to discredit me. No, you discredited yourself when you ask stupid questions like, does this White House support slavery? It's who you know. I, you know, I'm an open book. Anyone who knows me knows me. And what you see is what you get from me. But um, the president called me a loser. I'm not. And I, I'm someone like many, to include Abby Phillip. We follow the U.S. Constitution. We have the utmost respect and reverence for the highest office in the land. It's, it's sacred. The president is right. There is sanctity there. And, and one of the reasons is because life and death it's in the tongue and in the pen there. This is a and you know what? I'm glad she mentioned that because guess what? Life and death is in the tongue and in the pen. That's why journalism is so important. That's why not being fake news is so important because when you spread false narratives, when you create divisions, when you spend two years deeming the president of the United States as worse than Hitler, worse than Mussolini. He's a traitor. He's a white nationalist. He's a KKK member. When you spend all that time saying that, you don't think those words mean something? You don't think there's some Joe Smo sitting out there listening to you and saying, man, that sounds pretty good. And I'm going to give you an example of how words mean something at the end of this when all of these people echo the same narrative. Watch this. There is space and place. And we take our job seriously. No, you don't. And we have been. I mean, Abby's been there for many years, and I have been too. And I've covered the White House with you and many others mm -hmm. who, who, who understand who, who, the who seriousness Ow. of this place. And the office holder. There is reverence for that office as well. And to be called a loser by the President of the United States, I think back about... Can you believe that she just said there's reverence for the office no, there's not. Because if there was reverence for the office, Jim Acosta would have set his butt down when the president told him, that's it, Jim. That's enough. No more questions. That's not reverence for the office. That's, you know what I'm going to do? 
I don't think that you really have the power and authority to stop me. When people challenge authority, what you're doing is saying, do something about it. When you get up and you go past and beyond what the president has told you to, what you're saying is stop me. Do something about it. That is equivalent to you as a parent having a kid that you say, hey, man, don't stick your hand in that cookie jar. And the kid looks you dead in the eye and he's starting to reach in the cookie jar in front of you. And you're going, what did I just tell you? I said, don't reach in the cookie jar. And they're like, now, what that is telling you is this. You don't respect me as your parent. What you are saying is I'm going to do it right in front of your face and let's see you stop me because I don't think you can until you prove to that person that you are the person in authority and they get their butt spanked like Jim did. Same thing with April. If she respected the office, she wouldn't have got up in the middle of a press conference without being called, yelling out with no microphone and having the president to have to tell her to sit her butt down. And if she respected the office and all the rest of them, they wouldn't spend their whole days calling the president racist, white nationalist, uh, Hitler, Mussolini. He's worse than ISIS. He's a traitor. He's this and all of that. First Amendment of the Constitution, freedom of the press. He is challenging the Constitution when he says that. And that's his personal opinion. That's fine. But um, I also think about me being a loser today. But last year in January, was I a loser when he asked me to get together the Congressional Black Caucus with him. Now, let me him. tell you how to silence or the attempt to silence the mouths of your critics. OK, see, instead of saying things like he's attacking us because we're idiots and we say stupid stuff and we're trying to destroy him and create all of these false narratives and lies, they're saying, oh, he's trying to silence us because we're the media and the free press and he's a dictator who doesn't like being challenged and asking tough questions. So he's coming after us and violating our constitutional rights. Since when does the left get concerned about constitutional rights all of a sudden? They only want to apply constitutional rights when it comes down to them. But when it comes down to our freedom of speech, like all of us on, on, on the internet that speak out against the narratives, these are false lies. These people need to be silenced. YouTube, uh, Facebook, Twitter, get them out of here with little Brian Stelter running around, challenging everything. When it comes down to the Second Amendment, oh, they get rid of that constitution. But now all of a sudden, the media is, a, you know, they're trying to include themselves in with the real media. So they're just like, you know, he's trying to silence the mouths of the media. No, he's not. First of all, He's not even trying to silence the mouth of the fake news media, which they are. All he's doing is exposing that they're the fake news media. And by them spreading propaganda and fake news, it is causing conflict in our society. That makes them the enemy of the people. But let's continue. I thought I had enough gravitas then mm -hmm. and enough seriousness for, for me to do that. So was I a loser today and yesterday or just a loser today? Yeah, you're a loser. You've been a loser. What happened is he gave you a shot and you blew it. He asked you to do something. You tried to do it or I don't know whatever happened with it. But nonetheless, your character got revealed over time as we sit and watch you every week, get in the press conference and act a fool. Because I tried to ask a question about a serious issue, mm -hmm. voter suppression, and he responded to me. And that is the only reason why I stood. But if I'm a loser, so be it. All right. Now, listen to what she said. Only because I tried to ask a serious question. What about all the non-serious questions you've asked, such as, does this is White House support slavery? And then, of course, we know it's just not about voter suppression. You know where she was going with it. It was going to be like, are you guys suppressing black people's votes because you don't want the black and Latino people to vote? Secondly, you weren't called on. OK, maybe she forgot what second and third grade look like when you're in the classroom and the teacher is going, all right, who wants to ask a question? And they're all going, ooh, ooh, ooh. And you say, little Johnny. But then Susie says, you all see in 1950. And you're like, hey, 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 Susie, Shh. I didn't call on you. I called on Johnny. But if Susie keeps talking, Susie gets chastised. So that's what happened. That's what she's ignoring and overlooking, along with everybody else. Let's see what else she has. Look at look at the sad face, y'all. I want to show y'all the face. See that face? See, that's great acting right there. I'm a victim. He just he doesn't mean old Donald Trump. If I gotta be a loser, then I'll just be a loser. She needs to go.
win an April Oscar. is obviously very, very good at defending herself. She's good at she acting, too. She have to be the only one to do so. She mentioned that she covered the White House with you. Uh -huh. I covered the White House with April. Uh -huh. And she... She asked the questions, just as our, our colleague Abby Phillip does. And let's just cut to the chase. Here what we the go. president does, we go. and I've been on the receiving end ready. of it too. I've been called rude, you know, a year and a half ago, the last time uh, we talked, uh, by ask, just because I asked a, a regular question. Um, what the president does is he goes after the person who's asking a question which doesn't like the content of it, even though... And especially when it's a legitimate question, and that goes for April, and that see, certainly went. And see, this is this is today. this is where this is where the propaganda kicks in. She says he don't like when people ask a a question, and depending on the context of the question, if every single question you ask the president is designed to create and paint a false narrative, which they are not real questions, they're statements that's buried into what you call a question to lead people down that path to believe that the president is somehow a dictator, a racist, a white nationalist, a sexist, a xenophobe, anti-gay, anti-whatever. All of these questions that they say are questions are really statements that make them become activists, that set the president up for a ongoing debate with them about a moral issue in our society that they're trying to fight against or to stir up drama and create this image in the people's mind who's viewing this mess. So these aren't legitimate questions and the president sniffs it out and sees, I see what you're really trying to do and I'm calling you out. That's dumb. That's stupid. It's an unnecessary question. Blank, blank, blank. And they don't like that. But yet they'll call these things legitimate questions. Hey, who asked the question, the question of the day in a very straightforward very matter of fact way about whether or not his expectation was that Matthew Whitaker would, you know, do something to to quash the Mueller probe. Uh -huh. That's it. Wait That's a second. Question. Wait a second. Uh oh, here it is. How about what do all these people have in common? Well, that was April. Abby Phillips. That was going to be my next my next yeah. point. But take it away, Jerry. I bet it was. No, no, go for it. Go for no, it. Yumichi, there was another, Yumichi Alcindor, who Yumichi was also Alcindor. demeaned by the president ye yesterday. She works for all PBS. All black women. All black women. How about Don Lemon? How about LeBron James? How about the NFL football players? Constant attacks on black people. And Jim McCollum. Colin Kaepernick. I mean, come on, Colin Kaepernick. I mean, let's be honest here. There Michelle is Obama, also a Stacey huge Abrams. racial dimension to, to this. The fact that the president is always Andrew attacking Gillum. black people. Andrew, I mean, April, take it away. I mean, now, I, but, but I, let me tell you, this is how propaganda works, everybody. All you want to do is silence the president from being able to criticize his critics by coming up with these narratives and these motives that you assign to him based on his criticism. So, for example, if a woman says stupid stuff, if a woman is trying to race bait him, if a woman's doing all of that and he sees it and he chastises her, it's not because she said something stupid. It's because she's a woman. Now, that shuts down the criticism. Because now what that does is it gives free reign to all female journalists to fire into the president without, without having to worry about retaliation. Same thing. If they are, uh, um, you know, commentators or journalists of color and they're doing the same stupid stuff and he jumps down the throat, all of a sudden it's not because they're stupid and because they're saying dumb things or doing stupid things or attacking him first and he's responding, but it's simply because they're all black. See, you see the game? So now all of a sudden what that does is it tries to paint the, the president into a corner to where he cannot respond to black journalists. He can't respond to female journalists. And, and, and that's the narrative that they're trying to paint to silence the mouth of him responding. So by them talking about it seems to be all black people, that's garbage because guess what? I've seen him destroy white journalists just like the white lady who started off saying he did it to me last year. He does it to a whole bunch of people. He does it to white Democrats. He do it to black Democrats. He do it to uh, white journalists, black journalists. He does it to any stupid football player that's going to kneel, whether he's white or black. He didn't say white or black football players. He said football players, period. But notice how they always slide in the racial element. See, in their mind, 
It's not because these people are doing stupid stuff and President Trump's calling them on it. It's simply because they're black, because they're white. And we're going to not we're not even going to talk about all the tons of times that he has destroyed white people, too. He's an equal opportunist. The thing they all have in common, though, is they all attacked the president. They all had something negative to say about the president. That's what he's leaving out. See, that's what they all have in common. But see, he wants us to believe the only thing that they all have in common is is they're minorities. So therefore, it has to be racism. And I'm going to exclude all the white journalists that he destroyed. That's what I'm going to do. And I'm going to exclude the black athletes that he loves. He talked about Tiger Woods not taking the bait. He loves George Foreman. He loves Evander Holyfield. He loves he loves uh, Herschel Walker, all of them. But you know what, though? Forget that. We don't want to talk about that. We want to talk about him criticizing LeBron James, who tried to criticize him on, on national TV. That's what we want to talk about. We want to talk about those things. The people who attacks him, he responds, but now he's a racist. Has to be because they're black or women. We're going to finish this mess up selection of journalists he doesn't like is not the case it's always oops oops yeah i probably should have turned it down so he's just defining the presidency downward every single day in every single way i mean what we're all talking about is one thing but i would argue that every time he calls a reporter stupid no matter who it is or that's a dumb question or whatever he's acting like a three-year-old who doesn't want to answer because he doesn't have the answer and so what he does is he punches and uh yes i think he punches black women an awful lot and i think he punches anybody who challenges him and if you're president of the united states and you don't know that you are going to be getting tough questions then you shouldn't be there okay and i'm gonna end with that first of all you know you're gonna get tough questions what he does is he punches people who ask stupid questions. That's what she's forgetting. See, there's tough questions, then there's stupid questions. There are questions that are designed to really inform the public, and then there's questions designed to manipulate the public and create a narrative. And that's exactly what they're doing right now during this segment. All they're doing is creating a false narrative without telling you the fact that the president of the United States is responding to stupid questions, and he's doing it in a way that you know that they're a stupid question. And you're trying to belittle our intelligence because when we hear these stupid questions, I'm thinking you just asked a ridiculous question and he's responding to you like the child you are. He's exposing that I'm not even going to entertain that stupid question. In fact, I'm going to call you out for it and I'm going to embarrass you unlike all the other presidents in the past who tried to be presidential and allowed you guys to get away with this nonsense. I'm going to cut you deep in front of everybody and expose your ignorance, corruption, and your real true motive to try to divide the country furthermore, undermine my presidency, create false narratives that I'm this big old boogeyman, racist, sexist, slash uh, Hitler, and so on and so forth. But then y'all all all sit back and say, why are we so divided? Why is America just into, it's unbelievable. But yet you try to tell all of your viewers every single day, all day, that the president is a racist, sexist, he hates all Mexicans, he hates everybody but rich white men, and yet he's the problem. None of your questions have anything to do with substance and how it's going to help American citizens when it comes down to uh, health care, when it comes down to um, their jobs, the economy, none of that stuff. Y'all don't want to know about that. It's always Stormy Daniels. It's always, is Michael Cohen going to uh, squeal on you? Is Russia... Are you scared of Russia? Are you going to try to obstruct justice? Do you hate black people? Do you do you hate people of color? Are you trying to make America all white again, President Trump? Do you just are you do you like racism? Do you support the KKK, the Nazis? You think this is what we want to hear all day out of CNN? You think those type of questions are informative to us? All those are are emotional questions that you're trying to drum up really which are statements but you're trying to do that because you guys don't want the people to focus on the benefits that he's given to the american public that's what it is it's like let's get them mixed up into the ricky late jerry springer part of politics okay not the real substance all right let's entertain them with all of this drama 
and make up stuff instead of saying, President, break down, you know, your budget for next year and, and, and what you're going to be doing with it, how it's going to be dispensed. Tell me what direction you think the economy is going and talk to us about these trade deals and, you know, all of that stuff. No, they don't want to talk about that because that's substance. But they will talk about Stormy Daniels and they will talk about um, Armorosa or whoever else wants to say bad things about the president. Come on to the show. Come on, Alvinetti. We want you on here, too, even though we don't respect you. But we're going to bring you on as long as you're back. Oh, well, you messed up. You actually helped out the president accidentally trying to get him, get him out of here. Get him out of here. You're no good to us anymore. See, that's what the media is about. That's what the Democrats are about. They don't want people getting real substance questions. They throw out these stupid things. And when the president calls them out, now all of a sudden he's trying to silence the mouth of the free press. No, the fake news, perhaps. And he's not even trying to silence their mouths. He's exposing that they're the fake news, just like I just did. Anyway, find me on Facebook, find me on Twitter, check me out Wednesday nights at 7.30, check out Extreme Tees, the links are in the bottom, uh, you can find them there, and also if you want to donate to Kevin and Kevin's Corner, feel free to do so, heading out of town on the road again, mm -hmm. anyway, so uh, continue to check me out uh, on Facebook, I will be going live, I mean YouTube rather, I will be going live Wednesday night. And we will see you then. Hit like, hit share, and subscribe. And we'll see you next time in Kevin's Corner. God bless.